Charades was said to be the obsession of the late Mark Goodson. Tried several times to make it into a successful format, and never really got there. Show-offs had troubles with the host when Larry Blyden passed away after the pilot, and Bobby Van had to be rushed in to become the new host. Body Language in 1984 couldn't find an audience, and then Body Talk in 1990 couldn't get past the pilot stage. So it got me thinking, did we have any better luck with charades in Canada? Let's find out and look back at three different formats that aired north of the border. We start with a show that had its roots in 1964, and that show was called It's Your Move. On today's show, we've got over $2,500 in cash and prizes up for grabs. Welcome to Canada's favorite game, It's Your Move. And here's the star of It's Your Move, Paul Hanover. Thank you. Hi, thank you very much. Welcome, indeed, to It's Your Move. This is the show where our contestants have to race and fight that clock. The clock set at the time they bid for on the particular charade. If they get the charade, they get a point, three points, they got the game. Two games, they have the match. Five matches, we got a great grand prize in store for that lucky team. It's Your Move was created by Art Bayer and Ben Jolson, the producers of The Love Boat, and debuted in 1964, running until 1967. In 1974, the format was revived, and ran until 1979. So in that sense, it ran a total of eight years. There was also a syndicated version in the United States, hosted by Jim Perry, which ran for about four months. Good luck finding footage of that. The host for the majority of the Canadian run was longtime Hamilton-based radio personality Paul Hanover. The game is a simple charades game. One member of each team is shown a charade. Paul reveals out loud how many words it consists of, and both players begin a reverse auction for how much time they'll need to convey it to their partner. Conveying the charade, or bidding your opponents into defeat, captures the charade. The first team to three wins the game. If they conveyed at least one charade, they also won a $15 bonus. The winning team then chooses one of the charades they captured over the game, and this determines their bonus prize. One is worth a dinner for two, one a merchandise prize, the other a cash amount ranging from $10 to $250. A match consists of a best of three game series, and with the first team winning two games, moving on to face the new opponent. If a team manages to win five matches in a row, they will also win a trip. It's a functional game, but it's being done on such a painfully low budget. When teams are winning $20, there's just not much to get excited about. And the game just isn't strong enough to get over a small budget. But hey, the next attempt's got to be better, right? Uh, a doctor? Oh, Miss Do Prendergast. Uh, <laughs> doctor, I have just broken my glasses. Do you think I'll have to be examined all over? No, unfortunately, just your eyes again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Time for television's zaniest half hour, Party Game. Now here's that party game man, Bill Walker. Thank you. Ah, yes, thank you. Thank you. Party Game ran from 1971 to 1981 on the CHCH TV station based out of Hamilton. The host originally was actor and writer Al Baliska. But after only one season, he was replaced by actor, TV, and radio personality, Bill Walker. For a show that lasts as long as it did, there's surprisingly little information out there about Party Game. And not a whole lot of footage. I can tell you that along for the ride is the home team, made up of actor and comedian Billy Van, actress and singer Dinah Christie, and team captain, actor, and comedian Jack Duffy. From what little information I've gathered, here's what it seems to be the format. The vis a visiting team, made up of two celebrities and a contestant, plays against the home team. Each round, one member of each team attempts to convey a charade to their team as quickly as possible. The charades consist of longer phrases that contain puns, and for what it's worth in the few clips that exist, you do see some truly excellent charades playing. 
At the end of the show, the team with the shortest cumulative time won the game. The team that won the most games over the week being declared the champions, and if that's the away team, the contestant receives a prize. So, again, there's not much of a game here, and not much of a budget. But this is a case where it doesn't need to be. The zaniness and the puns make it a fun time waster. And it just feels like a bunch of friends getting together for game night. Speaking of which, the set, designed to look like a living room, sets the tone. And I know you're waiting for me to point this out. The theme music helps too. Anybody recognize it? It's Bond Street, from, composed by Burt Backrack. Or Family Guy fans might recognize it as this. Oh my god! Do you know what it's time for? A sexy party! <laughs> so we've covered the 70s and the 80s. Can charades survive the 90s? It's time for action on Acting Crazy! And here's the host of our show, Wayne Cox! The craziest 30 minutes on television. Acting Crazy aired in 1991 on the global networks for one season, and it was then revived in 1994 for another season, giving it a very unique place in Canadian television history. The host is Wayne Cox. Wayne is arguably the most underrated host in this side of the border. Fortunately, he got stuck with a lot of horrible shows over his career, his best known game show being Talk About. Great show, but it only lasted a year. On Acting Crazy, I can't help but think his talents are going to waste. Because he doesn't have a lot to do here. And based on a past interview I've seen, Wayne didn't think much of the show. Calling it Just Charades. So I can't help but think he's phoning it in here. And that's a sad statement from one of my favorite hosts. The 90s take on charades was as simple as it comes. Two teams of four play. Each team made up of a contestant, a celebrity, and two in-house players who appear on a rotating basis. Those house players being Billy Mitchell, Gary Jones, Dennis Simpson, and sisters Sue Burge and Melody Davies. Interestingly, Melody and Dennis were previously contestants on Talk About, also hosted by Wayne Cox. One member of the team is given a charade to convey the, to their team for up to 60 seconds. Whatever time it takes to convey the charade is added to the contestant's score. At the halfway point, the contestants swap teams, taking their scores with them. And at the end of the show, whichever team has the fastest time or lowest score is the winner and receives a prize. If a contestant can win five games in a row, then they get to shop for prizes in the Acting Crazy Galleria, or Player's Prize Emporium, as Wayne called it on occasion, in reference to producer Blair Murdoch. It's so odd to do this because it's never explained what they actually win, or if they have some sort of uh, limit when they're shopping, but really, it doesn't matter because the show just couldn't find an audience like the other two. The charades are basic, basic and not that much imagination. No gimmick to it, this at all. It's your move had the auction gimmick. It's a weak gimmick, but it's something. Party game had the puns and the zaniness. Acting crazy has nothing. So it's the worst of the three. After Acting Crazy, Wayne would go on to host a couple of unsold pilots, but to this date, this has been his last game show to make the air. He continued to work as a weatherman on Global News Hour based out of Vancouver for many years, until his retirement in 2012. So there you have it, three of the charades-based variants that appear north of the border. 
And it seems to be an interesting phenomenon. Less is more. Because there wasn't much to It's Your Move and Party Game. But they both had long runs. And then Acting Crazy had a bigger budget. But a plain game. So it only had two separate one season runs. So there's uh, proof for you, future game show producers. You might be able to get away with having a low budget if you have a strong enough game. And a strong enough host. So that does it for this month on the Game Show Canada. Next month, I'll be back in Newfoundland for my yearly vacation, and we'll be looking at a public access show from my home province, which yeah, I'll be very surprised if any of you have ever seen it. It's called Trivia Plus. Hope to see you then. Remember to donate to the Patreon, because we thrive on your support. And on behalf of myself, Seidelman, and everybody else here at Game Show Garbage, keep your stick on the ice.